China is building up renewable energy faster than the rest of the world combined, much faster. It's building the equivalent of five nuclear power plants worth of solar and wind every two weeks. But it needs plenty of batteries for that to happen. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, renewables are perfect. However, China, it wants every kind of power it can possibly get. And it's about to launch the world's first ever thorium molten salt nuclear power station next year apparently what exactly is a molten salt nuclear power station well here are the details hello my friends welcome to the channel i'm sam evans you're watching the electric viking speak of renewables and solar i just got a new solar system stoked to have it and uh the solar company that i used after doing tons of research um putting my you know getting some contacts in the industry and finding out who really does the best job has the best service best aftercare service was um Resync Solar. So guys, I'll put a link in the description to Resync. And I'll have a video up soon, so you can all check out my system and uh, I can show you what it's about. It's got a hybrid inverter so that I can put a battery in at some point in the future. Well, uranium reactors depend on solid fuels. Thorium reactors are, well, they use an environmentally safer liquid fuel that operates at normal pressure. So they're much less likely to have uh, a disaster like Chernobyl or like what happened in Japan. In a significant moment for nuclear energy development, Interesting Engineering says that China plans to set up the world's first molten salt nuclear power station in the Gobi Desert. Now, why would they build it in the Gobi Desert? Well, because no one wants to live anywhere near a nuclear power station. Elon Musk made this comment once. He said, basically, the, the TV host was saying to Musk, yeah, nuclear is a better solution than solar. It's brilliant. You know, it doesn't take up much space. Musk said, doesn't take up much space. Hang on a minute. When did anyone want to live near a nuclear power plant? So it takes up more space than you think because no one wants to live within, you know, 50 kilometers. This innovative facility though, which China claims will start operation by 2025, intends to reshape global energy with its high-end technology and prospects for a safer and greener nuclear power industry. Now, is it really safer and greener? Well, maybe. Instead of uranium, the plant uses thorium as its fuel. Its reactor does not need water for cooling because it utilizes liquid salt or carbon dioxide to transfer heat and make electricity. So really it's not even a nuclear power plant. It just sort of operates a bit like one. One advantage of using thorium as a primary fuel lies in eliminating fears over possible shortage resulting from running out of uranium which is normally used in reactors. This is due to thorium being more plentiful than uranium. Now, there is a possibility that could happen. The world could run out of uranium at some point in time in the future. It is a finite resource. It's not like lithium where we just keep finding more and more lithium. It's everywhere and we keep figuring out more better ways to basically refine lithium and to extract lithium, um, to remove the brines. It's, yeah, uranium is a bit, a bit more difficult. There's really not that much of it around. Thorium, an occurring element with radioactivity, has long been known, though, for its potential as a type of fuel in nuclear reactors. So, yes, it's still radioactive. It's not safe, safe, that's for sure. Unlike uranium-based reactors, thorium reactors have benefits, though, such as improved safety features and less long-term nuclear waste. The design of the salt reactor specifically made for using thorium enhances its advantages by ensuring that heat transfer and stays basically within a certain low level that re and that results in a stable operation and say for example if there was some sort of natural disaster it means it's less likely for the nuclear power plant to have a meltdown could it still happen though in theory could there still be a nuclear power plant meltdown like fukushima or chernobyl yeah there could be it is possible still China's choice to develop a thorium salt nuclear power plant shows its dedication to progressing different energy technologies and addressing environmental issues linked with traditional fossil fuels. Now, whilst it's true China did install a bunch of coal plants last year, they did, unfortunately, they are actually using less coal this year than they were last year. They are phasing out coal. So I know my fellow um, people who live here in Newcastle, you guys... If you see me, you're probably going to dislike with me for saying that because this town, it's like a coal town where I live. In a sense, a lot of the jobs here are supported by coal. It's the largest deep water port uh, for coal in Australia. So a lot of coal comes through this town. They rely on China buying that coal, but the gravy train won't last forever. 
and China fa plans on phasing out coal pretty much completely by 2050. Given the effort to cut carbon emissions and combat climate change impacts, exploring energy sources like thorium-based nuclear is probably a, a good idea, say some experts. Now, I personally don't agree. I understand why China would do this. Maybe they'd use this nuclear power plant primarily for energy in the nighttime. But nuclear power plants are not that simple. You can't really turn them easily on and off like you can solar power or even batteries and wind power as well. Now, one of the interesting features of thorium reactors is their passive safety. While uranium reactors depend on solid fuel rods, thorium reactors use an environmentally safer liquid mixture of fuel that operates at normal pressure. Now, whether or not it's really environmentally safer in the real world, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it's a question for another day, possibly. Uranium reactors depend on water cooling. Thorium reactors don't. So moving away from the water cooling model, this design significantly reduces the chance of having a meltdown. Well, at least that's what the inventors of this um, reactor say anyway. We don't actually know because um, we haven't had a disaster or something that would cause one to melt down. Further though, it does lessen other stratospheric catastrophic events that follow these events, creating a more secure version of nuclear power generation. But I mean, like I said, this is the first. So we'll have to wait and see. Basically, this is a guinea pig. These relative advantages, though, are rooted in thorium reactors generating less toxic and short-lived radioactive waste than uranium-fueled ones, thereby easing long-term disposal, say, interesting engineering. Now, the thorium molten salt nuclear power station complements China's energy strategy of diversifying their sources and improving their ability to not rely on one particular source. And that's what China is trying to do here. But even then, China's deployment of nuclear is minuscule in comparison to the renewables they're deploying. Now, looking at what China's actually done this year, only about 1% of the energy that's deployed over the last 12 months has been nuclear, and about 80% has been purely renewables. Now, getting back to thorium plants, unlike silicon, those more advanced products still need to be for sale or at least not widespread, making thorium the hot new thing that everyone's talking about. Everyone's saying, well, maybe we can just build thorium reactors because it sounds like a better alternative. This project aligns with China's carbon neutral ambitions and showcases their leadership role, says China, in the world of renewable energy and energy um, basically being net neutral. So essentially, China is saying this is a good option and it won't cause pollution. Now, look, you might be, if you've gotten to here, you might be wondering to yourself, what exactly is thorium? Good question. It's a weakly radioactive light silver metal, which tarnishes olive gray when it's exposed to the air, forming thorium dioxide. It is moderately soft and malleable and has a very high melting point. Now, thorium is a chemical element. It has a symbol TH and the atomic number 90. Now, one of the reasons why thorium hasn't been used in nuclear reactors in the past is that it's harder to prepare. Thorium dioxide melts at 550 degrees higher temperatures than traditional uranium dioxide. So very high temperatures are required to produce high quality solid fuel. Additionally, TH or thorium is quite inert, making it difficult to chemically process. In other words, in the past, it was much harder to process uh, thorium to make it um, to get it ready to actually put into a power plant but new more modern advances in technology have made it easier to process so now it actually might be a, a much better option than nuclear um, traditional uranium nuclear power plants that said guys either way i personally don't think it makes sense i just think the cost advantages of wind solar and batteries are, are too great to actually need this to require these kind of power plants but I mean, a lot of people disagree with me on this and I'd be intrigued to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.